Coming up on today's show, the Audi e-tron SUV gets rated by the US EPA and seems to have a much lower range per charge than some other cars, but there is a good reason for it. BMW, Daimler and the Volkswagen Group are accused of colluding to avoid competing on emission control technology, and Tesla's Q1 estimates show a slowdown in production and deliveries. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another Roundup show from the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles. We've been busy preparing for our India trip next week, but we've still managed to grab 28 news items for you all to enjoy. So let's get on with it. The US EPA has officially rated the 2020 Audi e-tron electric SUV as having an EPA approved range of 204 miles per charge, something that's rather a surprise since it has a battery pack rated at 95 kilowatt hours of capacity. Audi says that's less to do with the car's design and more to do with its very conservative battery management system. It uses just 88% of the e-tron's overall battery capacity. That's far less than the capacity used by most other automakers, including Tesla. Audi says, however, that using less capacity results in quicker charging times and longer battery life. The European Union issued a warning against BMW, Daimler and Volkswagen on Friday morning that it's concluded that they colluded to avoid competing with one another on emission control technology and, as such, held back the adoption and development of cleaner exhaust systems for internal combustion engined vehicles, including OFP particulate filters and limiting AdBlue injection systems on diesel engines. The automakers now have a chance to respond to the findings of the EU Commission, and both Volkswagen and Daimler say they are cooperating with the investigators. Following its now standard practice, Tesla has released preliminary production and delivery figures for the first quarter of 2019. They show a 31% drop in production overall, caused by a large drop in Model X and Model S production, as well as a slowing of deliveries compared to the previous quarter. Because it's now selling Model 3s in China and Europe, more cars were in transit at the end of the quarter than in previous ones, primarily because it takes time to ship cars around the world. I should note too that as an industry, vehicle sales have dropped recently due to worries about a global recession and bad weather. Lucid Motors, the California electric car startup that has the best chance of replicating Tesla's successes thus far, has confirmed that its $1 billion majority shareholding deal with the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund has now completed. Announced back in September, the $1 billion investment should give Lucid enough money to bring its self-driving all-electric Lucid Air luxury electric sedan to market. Some in the industry aren't so happy about where the money has come from, however. Saudi Arabia isn't big on human rights. But I should note, it also has shares in Tesla too. Ford has revealed its electrification strategy for Europe this week in Amsterdam by unveiling three new plug-in hybrids, the Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid, Ford Explorer plug-in hybrid and Ford Torneo plug-in hybrid, as well as promised an electric version of the Ford Transit commercial vehicle. All of the plug-in hybrids will have real-world ranges between 20 and 30 miles per charge and, says Ford, will be offered alongside internal combustion engine variants too. There's always been some mystery surrounding the Model 3's cabin-facing mirror-mounted camera. Some thought it might be for detecting driver attentiveness when in autopilot mode. Others have wondered if it was part of Tesla's sentry mode security system. But this week, Elon Musk revealed its real purpose. It's a camera to record passengers using the yet-to-launch Tesla Network Autonomous Ride-Sharing Service. It's essentially a way to ensure owners who rent out their car through the Tesla network don't have their cars trashed. We'll find out more on April 22nd when Tesla will stream a special event online to launch the service. Volkswagen says it's entered into a memorandum of understanding, or if you prefer, a contract, with the Gang Feng Lithium Co. in China to secure a long-term supply of lithium for use in future Volkswagen electric cars. 
The contract will cover lithium-ion supply for Volkswagen for the next decade and, theoretically at least, will help insulate the automaker from the ongoing battery supply shortage that currently exists in both the automotive and technology world. As I've said before, Volkswagen has the money to make this happen, something not all car companies do. Volvo has confirmed this week that it will be bringing an all-electric version of its all-new X40 SUV to market later this year. Based on the same platform as the upcoming Polestar 2 electric crossover, the electric XC40 is a little surprise since we'd previously expected the XC40 to only come with a plug-in hybrid variant this year. It's not clear yet what we can expect in terms of range per charge, but I'm going to guess somewhere between 200 and 300 miles per charge real world is a good bet. Ford, General Motors, Toyota and the Society of Automotive Engineers have announced that they are forming a consortium to establish a set of safety guiding principles and standards development for self-driving vehicles. The idea is to agree on a set of standards and tests that automakers must pass before autonomous vehicles can be certified for road use, then encourage other automakers and the government to agree on them so they can become law. Last year, lawmakers did try and set out a roadmap for autonomous vehicle adoption, but it ultimately failed to pass the legislate, leading to the regulatory stalemate that we currently exist in. And now it's time for short shorts. Toyota is making 24,000 electric hybrid vehicle patents it holds available royalty free to the rest of the auto industry. It's describing this as a way of encouraging others to electrify, but honestly, it looks like a last ditch attempt to revive hybrids. As part of its European electrification event this week in Amsterdam, Ford said that its upcoming long-range Mustang-inspired electric SUV has a range on the WLTP test cycle of 370 miles per charge. EPA and real-world ranges will be less. Put your reasonableness pants on. That's the message from federal judge Alison Nathan to both Elon Musk and the SEC in this ongoing battle over Musk's Twitter habits. Rather than pass judgment, she said both parties needed to work things together out. After several failed attempts, Nissan has finally sold its electric vehicle battery business to the Envision Group. Nissan says it will continue to work with new owners as it will view the company as an important supplier and will continue to expand its electric vehicle portfolio with said company's help. YT Gia, Faraday Futures CEO, tweeted a teaser this week of the MPV vehicle Faraday Future will be making for the nine under a deal announced a few weeks ago. Rather than be an FF91 clone, this boxy MPV will share the same FF skateboard and tech. Curtis Motorcycles, a motorcycle company you might not have heard of, has just announced the pricing of its futuristic Zeus electric motorbike at $60,000. These retro futuristic vehicles promise a 280 mile range, but little else is known. Tesla is pushing an update to Autopilot this week that makes Navigate on Autopilot more seamless. It's essentially removing the requirement that drivers confirm any lane changes before they happen and brings Tesla one step closer to complete fully autonomous operation. More details are released this week into the 258 mile EPA range for the 2020 Kia Soul EV. It's no surprise, but on the highway, range drops to 211 miles thanks to the car's boxy shape, while city range is nearly 270 miles. A new £14.3 million government-backed project has been launched in Orkney. It will use home battery systems like the Tesla Powerwall and vehicle-to-grid tech to help the islands of Orkney to eventually remove their need for fossil fuel backup for their renowned micro-generation and EV adoption rates. A fully electric Mercedes-Benz GLB has been caught winter testing, suggesting that the company is working on bringing a GLB-sized electric car to market. Following on from existing naming conventions, it would likely be called the EQB. No other details are yet known. Volkswagen will unveil yet another electric concept car at the Shanghai Motor Show. Called the ID Rooms, it's a full-size SUV previewing a future production model. 
But at this point, everyone's pretty fed up with Volkswagen's continuous concept car promises. Workhorse, the company behind the all-electric W15 electric pickup, N-Gen electric van and the Surefly delivery drone, has announced it's focusing on series production of its vans as it desperately tries to avoid bankruptcy. Experts say it's got six months or less to turn things around. Volkswagen says it successfully completed its first Level 4 autonomous vehicle test on the roads of Hamburg, Germany, in a specially modified autonomous e-Golf. Level 4 vehicles are to all intents and purposes fully autonomous in most driving scenarios. European battery company Innerleth says it's developed a brand new battery pack with an energy density of 1 kilowatt hour per kilogram of weight. It says it's theoretically capable of powering an electric car for more than 1,000 kilometers on a single charge. It's now obtaining patents and will continue its testing. It takes about three months of research before your average consumer knows as much about an electric car as they do an internal combustion engine vehicle. That's according to Watt Car, whose latest survey reiterates that there's still a major lack of consumer knowledge about plug-in vehicles. Mercedes-Benz has broken ground on a brand new manufacturing facility this week, which it says will be in operation by the end of the decade and producing many electric car battery packs. The entire facility will be carbon neutral. Volkswagen is gearing up to take its IDR race car to two more challenges, tackling the famous Nordschleife circuit in Germany this coming May and then racing up China's Heaven's Gate in September. The latter will include a race between the IDR in real world and virtual races in online recreations of the famous road. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Rivian might be gearing itself up for an appearance at the New York International Auto Show later this month, but it's also apparently been busy trademarking a series of new names, including A, C, T and R designations to the standard Rivian name. It's not clear what these are for, but some people are guessing that when paired with a number, it will designate trim level. Others are guessing that C could mean crossover. Given that the terms A and R are still a mystery, we'll have to wait and see what the company has in the works. I'd love R to mean roadster, but Rivian has made it very clear that it's focused on trucks and SUVs. So, yeah. And finally, we all know by now that Tesla loves to put Easter eggs into its vehicle software updates. From the underwater Lotus from James Bond to driving on the moon and Mars and the fart mode, there's always something nerdy hidden somewhere in the vehicle operating system. Now there's a new one with the latest update adding Super Breakout and 2048, both classic Atari games, joining the Easter Egg Club on Model S, X and 3. You'll be able to play them alongside other Atari games already baked into the operating system. Just make sure when you do it, you're charging, not driving, eh? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. Don't forget to like, comment and share and bash the notification bell. And if you'd like to support this channel, you'll find links below to help you do just that. You shouldn't forget too that we've just launched some new t-shirts in our Teespring store, so please do check them out. I'm going to be traveling to India this week to see some cool electric vehicles there. And so this coming week, our video selection will be a little different to usual. Please do let us know what you think of them and normal service should be resumed when I get back in about a week's time. Until then, I hope you have a great weekend and don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter to one another. Keep evolving.